Each person has within his or her brain a special organ called a reticular cortex. This small figure, like part of the brain, functions in a way similar to a telephone switchboard in a large office building. Just as all phone calls are received by the central switchboard and then rerouted to the appropriate recipient, all incoming information to your senses is routed through your reticular cortex to the relevant part of your brain or your awareness. Your reticular cortex contains your reticular activating system. When you send a goal message to your reticular cortex, it starts to make you intensely aware and alert to people, information and opportunities in your environment that will help you to achieve your goal. For example, imagine that you decided that you want a red sports car. You write this down as a goal and you begin to think about and visualize a red sports car. This process sends the message to your reticular cortex that a red sports car is now important to you. This picture immediately goes up onto your mental radar screen. From that moment onward, you will start to notice red sports cars wherever you go. You will even see them driving and turning corners several blocks away, parked in driveways and in showrooms everywhere you go. Your world will seem to be full of red sports cars. If you decided to buy a motorcycle, you would start to see motorcycles everywhere. If you decided to take a trip to Hawaii, you would begin to notice posters, advertisements, brochures, and television specials with information on Hawaiian vacations. Whatever goal message you send to your reticular cortex activates your reticular activating system to make you alert to all possibilities to make that goal a reality. If you decide to become financially independent, you will suddenly begin to notice all kinds of opportunities and possibilities around you that have to do with achieving your financial goals. You will see stories in newspapers and recognize books on the subject. Wherever you go, you will receive information and solicitations in the mail. You will find yourself in conversations about earning and investing money. It will seem as though you are surrounded by ideas and information that can be helpful to you in achieving your financial goals. On the other hand, if you do not give clear instructions to your reticular cortex and your subconscious mind, you will go through life as though you were driving in a fog. You will be largely unaware of all these opportunities and possibilities around you. You will seldom see them or notice them. It has been said that attention is the key to life. Wherever your attention goes, your life goes as well. When you decide upon a major definite purpose, you increase your level of attentiveness and become increasingly sensitive to anything in your environment that can help you achieve that goal faster. Your major definite purpose can be defined as the one goal that is the most important to you at the moment. It is usually the one goal that will help you achieve more of your other goals than anything else you can accomplish. It must have the following characteristics. One, it must be something that you personally really, really want. Your desire for this goal must be so intense that the very idea of achieving your major definite purpose excites you and makes you happy. Two, it must be clear and specific. You must be able to define it in words. And you must be able to write it down with such clarity that a child could read it and know exactly what it is that you want and be able to determine whether or not you have achieved it. 3. Your major definite purpose must be measurable and quantifiable. Rather than saying, make a lot of money, it must be more like, earn $100,000 per year by a specific date. Do you know? It must be both believable and achievable. Your major definite purpose cannot be so big or so ridiculous that it is completely unattainable. For example, a woman approached me at one of my seminars and told me that she had decided upon her major definite purpose. I asked her what it was and she said, I am going to be a millionaire in one year. Curiously, I asked her approximately how much she was worth today. It turned out that she was broke. I asked her what kind of work she did and it turned out that she had just been fired from her job because of incompetence. I then asked her why she would set a goal to acquire a million dollars in one year under these circumstances. She informed me that I had said that you could set any major goal you wanted as long as you were clear. And she was therefore convinced that was all she needed to be successful. I had to explain to her that her goal was so unrealistic and unattainable in her current circumstances that it would only discourage her when she found herself so far away from it. 
such a goal would actually end up demotivating her rather than motivating her to do the things she would need to be financially successful in the years ahead. A man on one of my seminars told me that his major definite purpose was world peace. I explained to him that unless he was the head of a major superpower, there was very little influence he could have on world peace. Such a goal would only keep him from setting a personal goal that was attainable, something he could work on every day. He was visibly irritated and walked away unhappy with my reluctance to encourage him in his fantasy. In both of these cases, they were using goal setting against themselves. They were setting themselves up for failure by creating goals that were so unachievable that they would soon become discouraged and quit making any efforts at all. This is a real danger when you begin setting big goals for yourself and you must be careful to avoid it. It can be a blind alley that leads you into discouragement and demotivation rather than success. I made this mistake myself when I was younger. When I first started setting goals, I set an income goal that was 10 times what I had ever earned in my life. After many months and no progress at all, I realized that my goal was not helping me because it was so far beyond anything that I had ever achieved. It had no motivating power. In my heart of hearts, although I wanted it, I really did not believe it was possible. And since I did not believe it was possible, my subconscious mind rejected it and my reticular cortex simply failed to function. Don't let this happen to you. Your major definite purpose should have a reasonable probability of success perhaps 50-50 when you begin. If you have never achieved a major goal before, set a goal that has an 80% or 90% probability of success. Make it easy on yourself, at least at the beginning. Later on, you can set huge goals with very small probabilities of success, and you will still be motivated to take the steps necessary to achieve them. But in the beginning, set goals that are believable, achievable, and which have a high probability of success so that you can be assured of winning right from the start. Your major definite purpose must be in harmony with your other goals. You cannot want to be financially successful in your career on the one hand and play golf most of the time on the other. Your major goals must be in harmony with your minor goals and congruent with your values. Here's the key question for determining your major definite purpose. What one great thing would you dare to dream if you knew you could not fail? If you could be absolutely guaranteed of successfully achieving any goal, large or small, short term or long term, what one goal would it be? Whatever your answer to this question, if you can write it down, you can probably achieve it. From then on, the only question is how. The only real limit is how badly you want it and how long you are willing to work toward it. One of my seminar participants, a professor of chemistry at a leading university, had won a Nobel Prize in chemistry two years before in partnership with two other scientists. He told me that when he started his university career in his 20s, he decided that he wanted to make a major contribution in the field of chemistry. That was his major definite purpose. He focused on it for more than 25 years and eventually he was successful. He told me I was clear from the very beginning. I never doubted that I would eventually make such a significant contribution to chemistry that I would win the Nobel Prize. I was happy when it happened, but it was not a surprise. Everyone wants to be a millionaire or a multimillionaire. The only question is whether or not you are willing to do all the things necessary and invest all the years required to achieve that financial goal. If you are, there is virtually nothing that can stop you. Here is an exercise for you. Take out a sheet of paper and write down a list of 10 goals you would like to accomplish in the foreseeable future. Write them in the present tense as though you had already achieved these goals. For example, you would write, I weigh triple X pounds or I earn triple X dollars per year. After you have completed your list of 10 goals, go back over the list and ask yourself this question. What one goal on this list, if I were to accomplish it immediately, would have the greatest positive impact on my life? In almost every case, this one goal is your major definite purpose. It is the one goal that can have the greatest impact on your life 
and on the achieving of most of your other goals at the same time. Whatever goal you choose, write it on a separate sheet of paper. Write down everything that you can think of that you can think of that you can do to achieve this goal and then take action on at least one item on your list. Write this goal on a 3x5 index card that you carry around with you and review it regularly. Think about this goal morning, noon, and night. Continually look for ways to achieve it. And the only question you ask is how. Your selection of a major, definite purpose and your decision to concentrate single-mindedly on that purpose. Overcoming all obstacles and difficulties until it is achieved will do more to change your life for the better than any other decision you ever make. All right, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, picture a large canvas in front of you that is filled with the colors and lines of possibility. This space contains not only a collection of words, but also a wealth of life-changing ideas that are just ready to be embraced and woven into your very being. Nowadays, I'm not just a speaker, I'm also a change agent, ready with a storehouse of life-changing advice that could cause big changes in your environment. Let's let go of the chains of doubt and fear as we gather here today, and instead open our hearts and minds to the endless possibilities that lie ahead of us. Because deep in the corners of our shared experiences are the seeds of greatness ready to be cared for and grown into completion. We shape our personalities in the crucible of hardship, and our futures are made in the crucible of knowledge. But let's not only think about the bad things that happened in the past. Instead, let's use them to build a better tomorrow. Every problem we face and setbacks we experience is not a hindrance, but a waypoint that points us in the direction of our true mission. In the search for this purpose, our lives take on new meaning, and the things we do are filled with more clarity and passion. So, as we start this path of self-discovery and empowerment, let's do it with courage and determination, knowing that we all have the power to make a difference and create our own destiny, even when life is rough. Let's all welcome the knowledge that lies ahead of us and use it to bring us hope when things look the worst. So understanding is the most important thing for success. This society pays its smartest people the most because they know more about their jobs than most people. They are smarter and know more important facts, ideas, and information than most people in their area. In a knowledge-based culture, this means they can make a bigger difference and live the best life possible. Because they have more schooling, they are respected and valued more, make more money, and get promoted more often. If you want to make more money, you have to learn more. It is important to boost your intellectual capital and the value of the information you use in your work if you want to make more money and live the best life possible. And you need to start right now. My friend Jim Ron told me that formal education will help you make a living, but self-education will make you rich. Also, information is becoming outdated faster than ever, so you need to keep learning new things, or you'll fall behind. As the basketball teacher used to say, if you're not getting better, you're getting worse. In the same way, if you don't keep learning new things, what you already know will become useless over time. That's a good question. What piece of information would help you the most in your job? What kind of information would it be? Is it time management, marketing, or sales? You have to pick your goals because you can't be good at everything. As the saying goes, one shot, one opportunity. I've learned that you shouldn't try to learn a lot of things. Instead, pick the most important thing you need to learn and become an expert in it. Skill is the second thing that makes you more likely to succeed, and it improves your strengths. When learned correctly and used often, information turns into a skill. These days, a lot of our skills are more mental than physical. We learn mental skills, which are effective ways to think act and choose what to do. The results are always the most important thing when it comes to information and skills. To be successful, you need to be in the top 10% of your area. This is something we know for sure is true. A Nobel Prize winning economist named Gary Becker and I had dinner together in Chicago about two years ago. He wrote an article in the Wall Street Journal saying that we don't have an income gap in America today. What we have is a skills difference. It's important to know because the difference in income is a big problem in politics. There is a lack of skills here. In a market or sale, people with great skills are fought over. People want you and hire you. But people with average or mediocre skills aren't really in demand. No one's asking for them. 
Let me tell you a short story. There was once a nuclear power plant that had major issues with its machinery. This plant's ability to make electricity was cut by 40%. In one of his speeches, a nuclear engineer told me that the plant would lose between 1.2 and 1.3 million dollars a day in electricity production because of what I told him. That's how big of a number the plant management was working with if it was at 40% and they couldn't find it. The plant was moving very slowly and they had tried everything to figure out why. It just kept moving slowly. Finally, they faced reality and called MIT, which stands for the Massachusetts Institute of Technology and is usually just called MIT. MIT sent one of the best nuclear power plant experts in the country. He drove to the plant, put on a white coat and began to walk through this huge control room, taking notes and looking at the gauges and signs. He said, Aha! That's the problem. At the end of the second day, he got up from a chair, took out a big black marker and put a big black X on the gauge. He put down his notes and coat and said, That's it. Replace this device and the whole plant will be back to full power. They thanked him for his time. He drove back to the airport and flew back to MIT. Everyone was ready to go. The engineering team was waiting for him to make up his mind, like runners on the starting line. At the end of his sentence, boom. They all worked together. After taking everything apart, they found that there was a big mechanical problem inside the device that could not be seen from the outside. They got to work right away. It was taken apart and rebuilt with brand new parts. When the switches were turned on, the whole plant was back up and running. They slapped each other on the back because they were so happy. They told each other how proud they were and gave each other support. There was happiness among them all. And it lasted for another week until they got a $10,000 bill from the expert for the work that was done. Chandler, the plant manager, called the chief maintenance engineer and said, Look, that guy who came here, hung out for a few days, made an X on a gauge and sent us a $10,000 bill. That's ridiculous. The chief maintenance engineer said, Yeah, we should have him itemize his bill. Yes, let's do it. Let's have him itemize his bill. The plant manager then wrote to Max and said, Dear sir, with all due respect, all you did was write an X on a gauge. $10,000 seems like a lot of money for that much work. Could you provide more detail on your invoice? Ten days later, they got a new bill that said, For writing an X on the gauge, dollar one. For knowing which gauge to write an X on, dollar nine hundred ninety-nine. It wasn't about how much physical work you had to do. This is especially true for your job. It was about how much mental work you had to do. So it's very important to decide to get to the top 10% in a smart and skilled way. Also remember this. No one is smarter or better than you. This really hit home for me because I got such bad grades in school. You're the smartest and best person in the world. You have more brain power than you could ever use in a hundred lives. Things that matter are how hard you work to learn a subject, not what grades you got. Don't ever think that someone else is better than you. The third thing that will help you move forward and get ahead in life is to make new friends all the time. There will be someone or some people who open or close doors for you during every big change in your life. The amount of people who know you, like you, and want to help you will determine how likely you are to live the best life possible. If you want to get more friends, you have to keep networking. When you meet someone new, the easiest way to network is to ask them what they do and then offer to help them. People really like it when you can send them a client. A lot of people who network think, what can I get from this other person? When you meet someone who can help you, you should think, what can I give this person? What can I do for them? And how quickly can I do it? This will make people want to help you in the future. There will be effects you didn't expect if you plant seeds and look for ways to help other people. Find ways to give all the time. I've been teaching this rule for many years. The more you give without expecting anything in return, the more you will get from places you least expect it. Don't forget that nature says so and nature grows. The fourth important thing for success that will help you get a lot more done in less time and move up in your career quickly is just good work habits. If you can maximize your return on investment, you can get a lot more done in less time than someone who is careless and disorganized. Most people are bad workers, which is a shame. They are not well organized, can't concentrate, and get sidetracked easily. They only work about half of what they can. They don't even seem to know how to work differently, which is a shame. This is a big issue these days. It would be like speaking a different language, even if they wanted to. They need to be shown how to do it.
If you want to be successful, you need to change the way you work and concentrate. Think about changing your lens like a photographer does to make sure you can see your goal clearly. Before you do anything, you need to be sure that it will help you reach your goals. A lot of successful people know that doing things you don't need to do is the worst way to waste time. Being very good at something that doesn't need to be done is the worst thing that people can do with their time. To concentrate, you need to be able to keep your mind on a job until it's finished. Making this choice will make the things you do every day much better and more of them. Soon you'll be one of the most successful people in your field. Fifth, being honest is important for success. Trust is what holds all ties together. People will think it's much more likely that they can get what they want from you if they know you, believe in you, and trust that you'll keep your word and do what you say you'll do. This will make them feel more confident and speed up the process. People in business say that word of mouth is the most effective form of advertising ever found. People telling their friends and family about a business is responsible for 85% of its sales and success. Harvard Business School says that a company's reputation is its most important asset. Customers learn about a business through what they say about it and its goods and services. This is called the business's image. There's a very easy idea at the heart of my new book, Now Build the Great Business, that hit me like a big wet fish on the head after 30 years of study. How do you run a successful business? 90% of your success will depend on how good your product or service is. The key word here is excellent. It's a great service or product. How can you tell if your service or product is great? How do you know? People say, this is a great product, this is a great company, these are great people. This means that your whole future depends on how many or what percentage of times your customers say, this is a great product, after using your product or service. A lot of people think I can sell a bad product or one that's the same as the others. All I need is a trick to get people to buy it, and then I can run and find someone else. But any business that does well knows that this customer will be there for a long time. They also know that making the first sale is only the start of the process. The second sale will happen, or not, based on how they treat the customer during the first sale, and how the customer responds. Make them come to you first, instead of your competitors. That's the business rule I speak of. You should get them to come back, because they like the first time so much. Make them bring their friends too. They come to you first, then come back with friends. And your image is very important here. Companies in the movie business spend $50 million making a movie and another $50 million selling it to get people to go to the theaters the first week. They can't spend $50 million spread out over a few weeks, so they need people to see the movie and tell their friends about it. When people start to be interested in the movie and start talking their friends about it, you need to watch that movie. That's when the movie starts to do well. Why? Since it's their image at stake. In both of our lives, it's all about image. Your name is very important. The most important things about you are your character and honesty. One choice you must make is to never compromise your honesty. Creativity is the sixth thing. There is a straight link between being creative and being successful. How successful you are will depend on how creative you are. The more ideas you have for how to make your life better, the more successful you will be. There are always new ways to get better, whether it's how to do something better, faster, cheaper, or easier. What can they do to help their clients? They are always trying to find better ways to do things. How good your ideas are will depend on how many you have. It's true that 99% of business plans don't work. Did you understand? A lot of people are shocked. It looks like nothing is working no matter what you try. Once more, don't think, there's something wrong with me. Try a lot of different things. If you do it right, you'll find the best way to do it. But you need a very large number of ideas. The seventh reason has to do with health. Most of the time, think about your health. You might want to eat less and better food. Think about working out every day. Take some time to rest. Remember that, that you need a lot of energy to do well in today's world. If you want to have a lot of energy, you need to eat well. Get enough rest and work out regularly. Last but not least, I want to say that we need speed. These days, people can't just take it easy, so you need to move quickly. You can only relax going downhill. So quickly try out your good thoughts if you have them. Know that it won't always work. Give it a try. Then try something else, and then another, and another. Gather your rejections and mistakes and keep moving forward. You'll get better and smarter, even if you're not aware of it. You'll learn more the more you fail.
As the lights come down on our time together, let us pass on the torch of inspiration that has been our guide today. Because the words we share and the knowledge we gain have the power to change not only our current situations, but also the very course of our future. Remember that the power to change your future lies in your own hands as you leave this meeting. Take the lessons you've learned and the new ideas you've come up with and use them as guide principles on your way to success and happiness. But don't forget, my friends, that information without action is just a bunch of words. When we put these truths into practice and strive for excellence and improvement every day, our lives really change. Be brave and sure of what you want, and know that every step you take brings you one step closer to your dreams coming true. And if you ever feel like giving up on this road, remember what was said here today. Let them be a source of power and encouragement for you, a reminder of how much potential you have. Because each of us is a thread in the fabric of life, and it is by weaving together all of our experiences that we make a work of art that is worth admiring. Friends, this is your chance to make the most of what's in store for you. The promise of a future full of plenty and happiness lies in following your dreams and pursuing your interests. Thank you for giving me the chance to go on this trip with you. May the wisdom you've learned today always make your lives better. And may you always aim for greatness in everything you do. Hello, goal-oriented friends. Today, we embark on a journey to unlock the secrets of goal achievement. A journey that promises to empower you to turn your dreams into reality, one step at a time. Whether you aspire to launch a successful business, achieve financial freedom, or simply lead a happier, more fulfilling life, the principles we'll explore today are universally applicable and profoundly transformative. Goals are the building blocks of success. They provide direction, purpose, and motivation to our lives. Yet, for many, the path to achieving our goals can seem daunting and elusive. We may find ourselves overwhelmed by the sheer magnitude of our aspirations, or paralyzed by self-doubt and uncertainty. But fear not, for the keys to achieving any goal lie within your grasp. In the next few minutes, we'll uncover seven simple yet powerful steps that will set you on the path to success and empower you to overcome any obstacle that stands in your way. As we embark on this journey together, I encourage you to approach it with an open mind and a willingness to take action. The principles we'll explore today have been tested and proven time and again by successful individuals from all walks of life. By embracing these principles and committing to their implementation, you too can achieve extraordinary results in your own life. So, are you ready to take the first step towards realizing your goals and unlocking your full potential? If so, Let's dive in and discover the seven simple steps to achieving any goal you set your mind to. Allow me to offer you a seven-step process for setting goals that you can use, and then I'll give you a simple exercise you can take home and perform. When you get home, this will make this a great year. Here are the seven steps to setting goals. First, decide exactly what you want. Now, the rule is that you need three types of goals, all right? We need business and professional goals because we have to make a living and pay the bills. You also need personal and family goals because these are the most important things we do. And thirdly, you need self-improvement goals. Whatever got you to where you are today is not enough to take you further. You can't move forward in life with your current level of knowledge and skill. Your business and professional goals are the what, what you want. Your personal and family goals are the how, why you are doing what you are doing. And your self-improvement goals are the how. So decide exactly what you want, and that's the starting point. Make sure you have a balanced set of goals. You can work on 10 to 15 goals at a time, but as we'll say in a moment, you must have a primary goal. Second, write it down. Write it down with a deadline. Writing it, writing it, making it specific, and setting a deadline. Having a goal without a deadline is like sewing without a knot at the end of the thread. Your life just goes in circles. So you have to decide exactly what you want. You have to write it clearly and set a deadline. I always, when I write my goals, I write to achieve such and such, buy such and such, accumulate so much money, weigh so much. So that tells your subconscious mind and your superconscious mind that there is a time frame on your goal, that there is a time frame. And psychologists say that a scheduled date acts as a driving system. 
it unconsciously propels you towards the goal. And by the law of attraction, it begins to attract the goal into your life, and things start moving. There's a law called the law of accelerated acceleration that says when you head towards your goal, when you start towards your goal, your goal starts towards you and begins moving towards you at a fast rate. And the faster you move towards your goal, the faster the goal moves towards you. And that's very often what happens. You'll achieve your goal and find that a lot of other things have been happening that have made it possible. So the law of accelerated acceleration says that the greater the clarity you have about the goal, the faster you move towards it and the faster it moves towards you. And that brings us to number three. Identify obstacles. Identify the obstacles you will have to overcome to achieve your goal. Now between you and your goal there will always be obstacles. The difference between success and achievement by the way is that success means you get what you want. But achievement means you overcome obstacles to reach a goal. Someone asked me recently on a radio program, what is the difference between a goal and an activity like making sales calls? Well a goal is something where there is adversity, difficulty, challenge and the possibility of failure. Making sales calls is just an activity. You can do it or not do it. Having lunch is not a goal. Going for a walk is not a goal, it's an activity. But a goal is something big, measurable, important that can have an effect on your life. So identify the obstacles. And what we know is that here you are and between you and anything you want, imagine there's a road and here's your goal. And on the road there are detours and there is construction and detours and so on. But there is always a rock that has fallen from the mountain onto your goal. So the question is, what's your rock? What's the main obstacle standing between you and achieving your goal? And what we know in the answer to this question is the 80-20 rule, which says that 80% of your obstacles, your big obstacles, are within you, within your own knowledge, your own ability, and within your own qualities. Someone was asking me earlier about self-discipline. Everyone here feels they need a little more self-discipline and say, yes. Even the most disciplined people feel their self-discipline is lacking. It's interesting, people who don't think about it have no future at all, I can tell you that. But everyone, the reason you're successful is because of your level of self-discipline, but we all have that nagging feeling that we need more. And you're right, we need more, and we can never let up. It's like exercising with muscles. And if you stop working with them for some time, they start to lose their shape again. You just have to keep working on self-discipline all the time. You never master it perfectly. So, 80% of all your rocks, the obstacles holding you back are within you. Only 20% are external. So remember what we said before, the question is, what's in me? If you're not achieving a goal, say what's in me, what quality, skill, or attribute am I lacking? And then work on yourself. And very often, that's where you'll find the problem. Identifying the skills needed to reach the goal, the fourth step in goal setting, is to identify the additional knowledge and skills you will require. As Les Brown would say, to achieve something you've never achieved before, you have to become someone you've never been before. You have to learn something you've never learned before. You have to apply something you've never applied before. Identify the additional knowledge and skills you require. We find that there is usually one skill that is your cornerstone. It is your main limitation for your success. And the way to discover your unique skill is by asking yourself this magical question. By the way, it's a life-changing question. It doubles your income, transforms your future. One of the best I've learned. You say, what skill, if I were excellent at it, would help me the most? Can you tell me which skill would help me the most to achieve my primary goal? Which skill would help me the most to double my income? Which skill would help you the most? And when you ask this question, the answer will arise in your mind. And almost invariably, it is a skill that you don't like. It's prospecting, it's closing, it's making phone calls, it's something you don't like to do. Now, why do we feel uncomfortable with a particular skill or in a particular area of skill? Because we're not good at it. Yet, we're just not good at it. Yet, that's all. And yet, the good news is, it's a skill that can be learned. The fifth step is to identify the people whose help and cooperation you will require. It's crucial. You will need the help and cooperation of your family if you are going to achieve big goals. You will also need the help and cooperation of your boss, your clients, your bankers, and your friends. Identify the people who have helped you, and then ask yourself this question. What's in it for them? Always start by asking yourself what you will give to get their support and cooperation. The average person who achieves very little always thinks about how they can get something from someone else, 
while the successful person thinks about how they can give something to someone else to get their help. Always present reasons why it would be advantageous for someone to help you. And it's amazing how much people will support you if there is a reason for them. So who are these people? And of all of them, who is the most important person whose help you will need to succeed? Is it your boss, your key client, your banker, or your spouse? Interestingly, there's a lot of trivial talk about how you should always keep your life in balance all the time. Well, it's just not true because there are times in your life when you will have to work hard to stand out, like at the beginning of a marathon with all those runners. You'll have to run faster to move forward. So you'll have to go to what's called a deliberate extreme. A deliberate extreme is when you'll have to work many more days and hours than usual to start a new business, a new career, launch a new product or service, etc. If you're going to go through a deliberate extreme, sit down with your spouse, your children, etc. and tell them, this is what I'm going to have to do to make the most of this opportunity. But if you stick with me, I'll make it up to you. We find that one of the main reasons for negative emotions in life is frustrated expectation. If you explain to people what's going on before they get angry and upset, if you then tell them in a way that makes their expectations consistent with reality, you'll eliminate most of your problems. The sixth step is to make a plan. Plans are very simple because you just make a list. You start with a list of everything you'll have to do. You've already identified it. You know what the goal is. You've broken down the goal into some deadlines. You've identified the knowledge you require, the obstacles you'll have to overcome, the people whose cooperation you need. You make a list of everything you'll have to do and then organize the list first by sequence, which means what comes first, what you have to do before anything else, and then by priority, what's more important and what's less important. And once you have a list organized by sequence and priority, you have a plan. Now you have two big requirements for winning. You have a goal and a plan. It takes a little time to do this, yes, but once you have the goal and the plan, the simple act of completing them programs them into your subconscious mind. The simple act of setting goals and creating plans can have a profound impact on our ability to achieve success and fulfillment in life. In our advanced training programs, participants are taught the importance of not just setting goals, but also regularly reviewing them and taking consistent action towards their attainment. It's remarkable to witness how, by simply committing their goals and plans to writing, individuals are able to tap into the immense power of their subconscious minds and set in motion a series of events that lead to the realization of their dreams. As Brian eloquently explained, the process of writing down our goals serves to program them into our subconscious minds, which then communicates our desires to the superconsciousness, the universal intelligence that orchestrates the events of our lives. And the results are nothing short of extraordinary chance encounters, serendipitous opportunities, and intuitive insights that propel us towards our goals with effortless ease. Research has shown time and again that individuals with clearly defined goals and plans are far more likely to achieve success than those who lack direction or purpose. In fact, according to the best research available, Goal setters outperform non-goal setters by a staggering margin of 10 to 1. Emmett Fox's timeless wisdom, as shared in his seminal work, The Mental Equivalent, reinforces this fundamental truth that we have a responsibility to our universe to create within our minds the mental equivalent of what we wish to manifest in our external reality. By aligning our thoughts, beliefs, and actions with our deepest desires, we unleash the limitless potential of our minds and invite the universe to conspire in our favor. So as you reflect on the insights shared today, I encourage you to take heed of this timeless wisdom and take action towards creating the life you truly desire. Write down your goals, make them clear, and trust that the universe will conspire to help you achieve them. Are you ready to harness the power of goal setting and manifest your dreams into reality? If so, let's embark on this journey together and unleash the boundless potential that lies within each and every one of us. If you do that, all the mental laws we've talked about and many more we haven't had a chance to delve into, they'll all work like a click, 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 and they'll all work, and what you want will appear on the outside. By the law of cause and effect, belief, expectation, attraction, correspondence, and so on, your job is to give the universe an absolutely clear picture of the goal you want which you can only achieve by thinking about it and writing it down. 
So here's the exercise, and this exercise is your assignment. Take a clean sheet of paper when you get home. And this is the only exam. This is a take-home exam. It's a test to see how much you really want to make the next year a fabulous year. At the top of this page, write the word goals. Some of you have seen this before. I need to teach it to everyone. And you're going to write down 10 goals. You can write more than 10 if you want, but you must write a minimum of 10. These goals are approximately one-year goals. They are goals you want to achieve this year. Health, income, car, travel, fitness, and so on. You write them in the present tense as if a year has passed and you're reporting that they have already been achieved. I will drive such and such cars, live in such and such houses, weigh a certain number of pounds, take such and such vacations, and spend time with my family. I will write about one of my goals. The more often I write it repeatedly, the more time I spend with my family. If it's an important goal and you don't write it down, what happens is it drifts away. You write it down and you make it positive. You won't say, I will lose weight, but I am a non-smoker, I weigh so many pounds. You won't say, I will quit smoking, but I am a non-smoker. It's always a positive statement. And thirdly, it's always personal. Every goal you write for the rest of your life begins with the word I. Because you are the only person in the universe who can use the word I regarding yourself, and you follow it with an action verb, I earn, I sell, I drive, I live in, I achieve, I accomplish, I acquire, I save. But always make it I plus an action verb. That's how the subconscious mind accepts instructions. When this instruction comes like this, it is immediately passed on to the superconsciousness. I have taken people through this exercise all over the world once and they come back in here two years later and say the same words in every language. You won't believe what happened to me. I wrote down those goals and I never saw them again. You won't believe what happened to me. I found those goals a year later and you won't believe what happened. I have achieved all the goals. I didn't see it again because when you write down a goal, you activate three learning modalities. The visual, you can see it. The auditory, you sub-vocalize it. You say it to yourself. And the kinesthetic, you write it. All three together go straight to the subconscious mind and are passed on like one of those vacuum tubes for messages in old stores. Boom, straight to the superconsciousness. And you just go on with the rest of your life in the 24 hours. Now you have your list of goals. Here's my list. Right here, I do this all the time. Then you look at this list and here's what's important. You ask yourself, if you could wave a magic wand and achieve any goal on this list, these are your one-year goals. But imagine you could have a special dispensation and wave a magic wand and you could have any goal within 24 hours. Which of these goals would have the greatest positive impact on your life? Then you look at your list and I can assure you the correct answer will jump out at you. It's usually a financial goal because if you achieve a financial goal, it will impact everything else. But sometimes it's a health goal, sometimes it's a business goal, sometimes it's a relationship goal. Your primary goal becomes your definite purpose. The organizing principle of your life, the goal that will change your life, because now you begin to think about this goal all the time. When you have the chance, you sit down and write this goal at the top of a page and set a deadline for the goal. Then you identify all the obstacles you'll have to overcome to achieve the goal all the knowledge and skills you need to achieve the goal, the people whose help you need. You make a plan, organize the plan, and work on the plan every day. When you wake up in the morning, you think about the goal. As you go through the day, you think about the goal. Every time something distracts you from the path, you start to think about the goal because the goal is inherently positive. When you think about the goal, you become happy. When you think about your goal, your self-esteem and self-confidence increase. And it's absolutely inevitable that you begin to move toward the goal. And as you get closer to the goal, you feel powerful and you feel like a winner. You feel like you're in control of your life and your self-confidence increases and your self-esteem increases. And as sure as God made green apples, you'll reach that goal. And when you reach that goal, you get that rush I was talking about. That tells you, hey, I can do anything. I can do anything I set my mind to. And once you know you can do anything you set your mind to, your self-confidence will soar. You'll set bigger goals. You'll put more zeros at the end of your goals and you'll become unstoppable. So let me conclude by saying this. You have unlimited potential. You're living in the greatest country at the greatest time in all of human history. The possibilities for the future are greater than they've ever been for humanity right here in this country. There's nothing you can't do if you set your mind to it. So go out there and kick butt and take names. Do it. 
And as we conclude our journey through the seven simple steps to achieving any goal, let us pause for a moment of reflection. The principles we've explored today offer a roadmap to success, a blueprint for turning your aspirations into achievements and your dreams into reality. From clarifying your goals and creating a plan of action to cultivating resilience and embracing accountability, each step holds the power to propel you forward on your path to greatness. But let us not simply marvel at the insights shared today. Let us take action. Let us commit to implementing these simple yet powerful steps into our daily lives, one step at a time. For it is through consistent effort and intentional action that we will truly transform our goals from mere aspirations into tangible realities. As you reflect on the lessons learned today, I encourage you to identify one key takeaway, a single step or strategy that resonates deeply with you and holds the power to catalyze positive change in your life. Make a commitment to incorporate this insight into your daily routine and watch as it transforms your approach to goal setting and achievement. Remember, the journey to success is not a sprint, but a marathon, a continuous journey of growth, learning, and self-discovery. Along the way, you will encounter obstacles, setbacks, and moments of doubt. But take heart in the knowledge that you possess within you the power to overcome any challenge and achieve greatness beyond your wildest dreams. So as we bid farewell to this chapter of our journey, I encourage you to embrace the power of these seven simple steps and let them guide you towards the life of abundance, fulfillment, and success that you truly deserve. Thank you for joining me on this transformative journey. May the principles we've explored today serve as a guiding light on your path to achieving any goal you set your mind to. And may you always remember the power to achieve greatness lies within you. Seize it with courage, determination, and unwavering belief in yourself. Until we meet again, may your journey be filled with purpose, passion, and boundless possibility.